guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review or card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Puzzle Dungeon by Brian Garber. It plays one player. It's a solitaire style card game in which you're going to be entering the dungeon with one of up to 192 front and back heroes in which you're going to be having cards in your arsenal, cards in your hand, using those cards to defeat monsters, kill king cards, and accomplish your mission. If you can do so before the deck runs out or something bad happens, you'll win the game, but if you can't, you're going to have to start over. Luckily, there's infinite replayability and a ton of different characters you can choose from with all sorts of craziness going on in the game. Let's go ahead and take a look down below what you get in the game, how it plays, and then what I think about it. So here we have Puzzle Dungeon, the deluxe edition, and there is a base edition, and I have played both, and you're going to get three types of cards in this game. The first type of cards are the arsenal cards, which is this deck here, which are going to have suits and numbers associated to them, and then you're going to have hero cards, which are all three of these decks and this single hero here. You're also going to go ahead and get monster cards, which are both front and back. The front side is going to be the base monster and the back side will have the king or the elite monster which will have these little crowns there. Uh, you're going to go ahead and first start by choosing any hero you want and there's a ton of heroes to choose from and a lot of them have front and they have backs as well. You can go through them and just select one that you like that you want to play with. They have passive abilities and they have abilities that you'll be able to uh, utilize when you defeat either kings or trophy monsters, monsters that you're not actually fighting. Based on what you choose, for instance, Brutus here, is what monsters have to be in the dungeon. For instance, this type of monster has to be in the dungeon, so you'll associate all of the cards of this type into the dungeon. This is a specific type, which is a king monster, which would be the backside of these monsters. So which that, when, that, when that happens, that means you're just going to select this one type of monster and choose four of any other type you like. If you're playing as Special Agent Fred, however, you would take the pyramid monsters, all of these like phantom monsters and these like snake type monsters, and then you get two other. So you're always going to have five, but some of them are going to differ based on the hero you choose. After you take all of those, you're going to shuffle up all the cards and make four columns with five in them. They're all going to be randomized and they're all going to have the non-king side facing up. After you have done that, you're going to no longer need all the extra hero cards that are associated with the game, nor will you need any of the additional monster cards. You can go ahead and set those aside. You're going to then shuffle the deck and deal out six cards into your arsenal and six cards into your hand. After you've done that, the game is pretty simple. You'll have two options. Option one is to draw a card from your arsenal uh, deck and place it into your arsenal. And option two is to utilize cards in your hand and the top cards of the arsenal deck to fight monsters that are visibly available to fight. A monster card is going to have a type. It's going to have what item you can use if you take it and defeat it. Uh, what happens when you beat it, as well as depending on what type of monster it is, uh, they'll have special uh, abilities like this one here it says exhaust two defeated monsters so they all do different things when you defeat them and you gain specific bonuses for each type to begin the game it's pretty simple uh let's go ahead and show you this is my hand which is completely separate from the arsenal because you can choose to utilize any of these cards here and uh they're going to be used to kill these guys here. So for instance, let's go ahead and look and see what we have. Uh, they have this guy, he's two swords, which we'll go ahead and use from the top of the deck. First we use one sword here, and then we'll use another sword here. Then we need a wand, so we'll use this one here. And then we're going to need one of these helmets. That's the four cards required to defeat the living flame. So you'll discard these cards, and then this living flame here is going to perish. Uh, it says you may rearrange the front six cards of the arsenal. So if I want to rearrange the front six cards, cards of the arsenal, I can go ahead and do that, uh, but I'm going to choose not to, so I'm going to go ahead and put this guy to the side. He is now available to be used one time, he can basically become exhausted, in which case I can utilize him as a hand. So after that I can go ahead and choose a new monster if I want, or start drawing cards into my arsenal. Well, I'm pretty happy with what I've got here, so maybe I'll go ahead and fight this guy here. He's going to require a hand, and then I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, wand here. And then he's going to need a, another wand and a sword. Discarding these things here to defeat this monster over here. Now it says, choose a suit. Draw each card in the arsenal with the chosen suit. So if you want, it's a specific ability, choose a suit. So I would choose uh, hands, in which case these would all go into my hand. And this guy now becomes part of my, uh, part of my ability to use him. So now I have 
two hands to utilize against these monsters. Now, to win the game, Brutus has to defeat four of these monsters and two of these monsters. These monsters are found throughout the dungeon. There's one here, 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 and here. So if I can kill these four here, all I need to do is defeat two kings. How do kings pop up? Well, if the last monster of a variety or of a type be, uh, is left, so for instance, if I had defeated all of these except for this little blue devil here, he would flip and become a king, in which case I could defeat him, and then that would count as one towards my king count. Also, additionally, uh, the last monster in any column uh, it gets flipped over and becomes a king as well. So once you satisfy these two goals, you win. Uh, this guy also has a specific ability. This one says after drawing your starting hand, you may discard up to two cards, and for each discarded card, you can move any monster to the, d d um, to the front of the column. So I could have discarded two cards of my six if I wanted to, and I could take one of these monsters and I could have moved it to the front of the column. But of course, it's at the cost of cards. Once you discard cards, you lose them. So I can choose also to not do that. Another thing it says is down here, it says if you defeat a king, uh, do you can defeat any monster that you're not currently hunting. So if this guy was flipped over and he was this, and I defeated him, I could then also defeat this guy here because he is not one of these, which is what I need to defeat. So that is kind of how Brutus works. Now, of course, this is my hand. I got my monsters I can utilize, and I have no cards in my arsenal, so it's probably t start t t time to start drawing some. I got a lot of hands here. I don't need to worry about that card, so I'll leave it there. There's a wand. So now I have a helmet, a hand a wand but no sword so let's go ahead and see if i can find a sword nope there's another wand there and there's another wand and a hand oof ooh, that's that's dangerous now um i still need a sword unless i have another helmet too a helmet would help there's a hand again another wand there's a helmet finally so i can have helmet i could do helmet um i could do wand and I could do hand, in which case I would got a reaper, which is one of my goals, and defeat the front monster of any column. So I'll put him aside. Any of these monsters I can go ahead and defeat. So I will choose to defeat, I don't know, this mummy over here. And now I can utilize him for later as well. And that's basically the idea of the game. If you can get the objectives complete before the deck here runs out and you're not able to draw any other cards, you'll win the game. And if not, you're going to suffer a terrifyingly terrible defeat at the game Puzzle Dungeon. Let's go ahead and talk about it above. Okay, so some caveats first before we get into my review of the game. The first thing is that a lot of heroes don't actually have that boss ability I showed you. Most of them have what is called a trophy monster ability, and a trophy monster is just simply any monster that isn't in the middle area of your card. So this guy here, he's got robots and that weird goo and those ghosts. So if you fight something like, oh, I don't know, a bat or something like that, then you'll be able to use that trophy ability and it has a specific ability on it that you can utilize. And monsters that are spent are monsters that have been used after you have defeated them. Monsters that are unspent are monsters that you can choose to turn sideways and utilize their uh, bonus one time. Their bonus is at the top left of the card. Otherwise, though, that's basically the idea of the game. You only get two actions. It's simple drawing cards and putting them into your arsenal. You can only use the top card of your arsenal when you're fighting monsters along with cards in your hand that are used more frequently. Really, you're also able to choose pretty much any monster or hero you want. And there's so many heroes. Like, I'd love to give you an example of all the heroes in here, but there's just way too many. And each hero provides something different to the game and makes it feel a little different as well. I'll go ahead and read a couple, though, just to give you an idea. The archer, for instance, you can attack the monster behind the front monster in a column. So instead of that front monster dealing with, you can choose to attack the monster right behind it. And then the trophy abilities, you can put any card used to defeat this monster on top of the deck. On the opposite side, it's another archer as well, and it says you may only attack kings with cards in your hand. Um, and, wow, that's that's not so good. But it, whenever you get a trophy monster, you can reveal any king or draw a card. And finally, if you kill a king, you can ready two exhausted monsters. Ooh, that's pretty useful. Um, let's go ahead and look at something else that looks cool. How about a pirate? The pirate says you can use cards anywhere in the arsenal to attack the trophy monsters. And when you kill a trophy monster, draw an addition, any card in the arsenal. So you can take arsenal cards and put them into your hand. Uh, what else? Let me look at another one. How about a Valkyrie? When a monster is defeated, reveal any unrevealed monster of this type that is a king. And then if it is, uh, if you defeat a trophy, you can put a card in your hand into play as a sigil behind any column that doesn't have one. Monsters in a column with a sigil lose one instance of that signal suit. Ooh. That's really good. So, for instance, if you got a hand uh, that you've defeated that was a trophy monster, you can put that monster in maybe column 
B or column two, and all of that rows or col all of that columns monsters are going to be ignoring that one specific type of uh, card you choose to play. There is just so many. How about Slay Slay Bell's Santa Claus? <laughs> After yeah, this, is, this is a pretty good one here. Uh, after you defeat a monster, open the gift that corresponds to the number of monster weapons used in the attack. Two, three, and four. So two is ready and exhausted monster. Three is draw two cards. And four is trigger this monster's uh, uh, treasure ability twice. <gasps> wow. I like Santa. He's very, very giving in this game. Anyway, I think you get the idea. There's just so many things in this game. The Deluxe Edition comes with, obviously, more heroes and more monsters of different types and suits, um, which is really, really cool, but also not needed if you just want a smaller, condensed version of the game. This one's nice because it has pretty much a huge amount... The, the base game has an infinite amount of replayability, in my opinion, and this one has an infinite, infinite amount of replayability just because of all of the heroes. Do you need all the heroes? No. But is it really cool? Yes. I like games that are like this. It's very straightforward as to how you play. You put it on the table, you're playing it to bypass some time, and it plays very, very quickly. You either win or lose at the same time as maybe a game of Solitaire would take. This is probably one of my favorite Solitaire games I've played in quite some time, just due to the simplicity of it, as well as the fact that it re reminds me of a game called Boss Monster, which has some really cool art. This game has all that style art as well. If you like those 8-bit uh, style artwork, then you're going to enjoy this one. It's got a lot of humor in it. It's got a lot of different characters that you can choose from and really it's just a game that you can pretty much play anywhere the game is basically sets out to be a replacement to solitaire and i think does a very 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 good job for those of you who are gamers and want to play something that's like that but with a little more pizzazz a little more monsters and some retro feel to it overall i really really enjoyed myself uh my time with puzzle dungeon and i think you guys will as well if you like solo games and you like games that feel like you're uh, basically crawling through a very small makeshift dungeon for those of you who probably wouldn't like this game i would imagine anybody who's not a solo player game Play, somebody who's not into playing games solo may or may not enjoy this game. I mean, generally, I'm not a huge solo player, but this one, it spoke to me very well, so maybe it will for you, um, as well as maybe you don't like the art style. Uh, but otherwise, I think it's just a really solid game. I think most people are going to enjoy this one, uh, as long as they don't mind just the amount of content they get in this. If you think there's just too much uh, in this, you're not going to be able to play through it all. You might want to get just the base game. But overall, solid little game, Puzzle Dungeon, I really enjoyed myself.